Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Nat. Today we are going to play with a very, very pretty stamp set called Lotus Bouquet. We've got some antique linen, we've got some Arches watercolour and we've got the Scamsai Tambi water paint watercolour set. We've got two, frankly. So we're going to use... We've got the two lids here, but what I'm going to actually do off camera is down the very bottom of the screen, I'm going to swatch some of those other little colors into my big lid so I can see exactly the other colors that I've got. We're going to use one color out of the small set, but the rest is going to be out of the bigger set. And I think it was a 36, 36, I think so. I can't remember. Anywho, doesn't matter. So we've got some of this Arches Smooth 300 GSM watercolour. As I said, this stamp set is called Lotus Bouquet and it's really, really pretty. I'm going to love getting some of my Copics or some pencils or something on it. I'm still not decided on which one, I'm, what I'm going to do, but anywho, that's what we're going to play with at some point. So I'm going to stamp this out in the Antique Linen Distress ink and I'm going to stamp this out twice because I thought it would be easier for you guys to see as I painted it. And why I use the Antique Linen is because it just sort of melts away. So we're going to use these two blues out of the larger set and we're using the Perusian Blue, per Perusian, is that the name of it? Perusian Blue which is quite a nice light blue and this darker indigo like it's a really really deep color so I'm putting I'm no expert I'm going to do a disclaimer I'm no expert expert with watercolors I love having a play I love coloring and I watch videos I would highly recommend Sandy Orlock as a person to watch with her watercolors because she's just she's just amazeballs I tell you she's just awesome what I have learnt though is to put a to put the color down in the darkest areas wipe off your paintbrush and then using just water to blend that out and I let that dry. I know there is techniques that while it's still wet you can put another color in but for the time being I would like to practice and get better at this sort of technique and just using watercolors a bit more. So what I tend to do is put the lighter color in because that's going to be my highlights put the darker color in like a little bit of the darker color and blend that out and then come through then once it's dry yet again come through and do some of the finer details so if you have a look at the stamp set the person who's drawn it has made some more little lines some more little details on it to help you along the way so I've just used those I think I've added a couple of extra ones every now and then but I've just used those when you pop over to the blog you'll be able to see some close-up photos and a little bit of all the information of the colors I used and all that sort of stuff will all be over there so have a jump over there and check that out they I have made some mistakes in this because I ain't perfect with my watercolor and honestly I, th I think part of the the thing with watercolor that I'm sort of learning is letting go some of that control I think the first couple of things that I tried to do that were watercolored I tried to Copic color them and blend it all in and it just didn't work it so did not work but that's the whole thing about watercolour and colouring and paper crafting and doing anything 
is using it, practicing watercolor calligraphy, all that sort of stuff is practice. You're never going to get it um, wonderful the first time around. And it, it's a learning curve, but it's a fun learning curve. So I would highly recommend you get in there and just let go. Try the colors, try the paints, try the different paints, see how you like them. Um, I have a couple of sets that I can't talk to you about the grain. I can't talk to you about the granulation or the color fast or because I don't know. All I know is that I like to have a play. So that's what I would recommend to you guys just to have a play. And the same thing with the buds as with the flower that where you think about where the darkest bits and pieces are going to be that's where you put that dark color in and then try and um, blend it out so this is where sorry about that people ringing me on facebook messenger and it's just yep moving on anywho what was i saying we're going to use the lighter color is out of the smaller set it is called greenish yellow it's a very very creative name but it's what it is so that's great and the other green that we're going to use is olive green so the same sort of deal we're going to put the dark color down well concentrate the color we're going to put the color down in the dark areas blend it out after like I rinse off my brush I blend it out a little bit and then I just keep working it until I am happy I let it go I let it dry and then we'll come back in with the dark color and then usually depending on what is happening I'll it's usually a third or fourth time where I'll come in and put some those finer details that's what I was I think that's what I was saying I can't remember what I was gonna say because it totally distracted me and now my phone's going off with the same person probably okay I just get totally distracted sometimes anywho there's not really much I was trying to think of more things that I could tell you it's a process of going through and doing okay we're gonna pause for a sec this is where the flower was not quite dry where I tried to blend out and then I put in some of the details and you can see it's bloomed out which is fine we're gonna work with it it doesn't matter so that's probably in like mistake number one it depends on what you're looking for yeah it depends on what you want in your watercolor and this is just where you figure it all out and you learn exactly what you need to do and what what you need to do what you want to achieve and then you slowly work out what you need to do does that make sense it's all just a practice that's all there is to it so yeah while I work through that so as I said this is a paper rose I th think it's a relatively new one because I honestly haven't seen it and it's so pretty what I'm gonna do is also I'm gonna make another mistake later on and I'll let you know when that happens so you can learn hopefully you can learn from me okay don't do what I do do what I tell you to do which is practice so I've pretty much used a, a couple of yellows and a brown for my center of my lotus I don't think you generally get too many blue lotus flowers I had a bit of a google to see what color these middle bits were and generally speaking all the lotus flowers all had this yellow I'm going to assume that the other bit down the bottom is like another seed pod 
So that's what we're going to color it in. If you know what that is, if it's anything other than a, a, um, a seed pod, leave a comment below and let me know. So this is a video, it's a little bit Tuesday. So you can, if you would like anything out of this video, the paints or the stamp set or anything, not that there's too much more, give Leslie a buzz or drop her an email. She'll be able to set you up with any supplies that you need. Her information will be linked down below. And as I said, there will be more information. There'll be photos, close-up photos, because it's always not as easy to see on videos. Close-up photos over on my blog. I will have a list of all the colors that I've used, all the, the arches, the watercolor, the paper, the colors, the... And there's a little bit of cardstock in the back of it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm wanting the flower in the stamp set to be the focal point. Just, I wanted it to be the crowning glory in the card. So we're just filling in some of the leaves and putting in some of the shading a bit. This is where I'm going to do the centers. So I'm going to use cadmium, cadmium, I think that's how you pronounce it, yellow, yellow okra. And then what I'm going to do is have a little bit more depth. We're going to use a raw umber deep and blend that all in a little bit. I think that mostly the these two colors are the highlights, the deeper, the shading and the deeper parts and everything else. And when I'm going to use the raw umber deep for little details you'll see you'll see patience patience Diago so again I'm leaving the I'm working on one area at a time jumping over to a different area so it doesn't bleed out And I'm trying to leave that little bit of highlight and uh, for the center of the flower of the yeah the center of the flower or the seed pod whatever the heck this is going to be it's really pretty that's all I know I just had something else I was going to tell you but I can't remember this is our raw umber deep we're coming in now with getting it movie this what colors are really really creamy do not do this do not do it you can do it but not yet so these flowers have a little I don't know what they are I'm using the stamp set as a reference to see exactly because of course I can't it's blending all in together and I can't really sort of see too much of what's going on but what I want to do is put the a background in it which makes it a little bit hard when you just put this finer detail we're going to use I've got a fatter brush here oh, that's what I was going to tell you I'm using a size 2 brush well I was before I did have a I did have another brush that was the tip of it was just not amazeball so I threw it out honestly what I'm doing is so I've used a little bit of the white to soften the deep umber and making sure my edges stay wet I'm putting again I'm putting this in the darker color and blending it out but what you'll see me do I think very shortly is you will see me go back over the lighter color the edge of sorry there there that bit so just light just re-wet the edge this will help it to keep being able to move because if you're putting the color into the lighter area into the wet area then it will bloom out if you've got any areas that are a little bit too dark then you could just use a paper towel and just dab those away so i've got a very um 
can I say organic background in this because some of it is very you have spots where it's darker and spots where it's lighter and I just wanted that really sort of wishy-washy rough sort of not smooth I don't know what the word for it is because my brain has stopped working but just that really soft sort of um, background on my for my image now going around in between the leaves I'm going to dab off areas at different times because this color is quite dark and this is where my problem is I don't want to go over my little detailed bits because it's gonna it's gonna pick it up it's gonna move it's it's not color fast I think that's the word for it in the center here it's really really dark so that's where I'm going to dab off some of the bits and pieces and some of the color there we go and then move it back around and spread it out so this is why you don't want to do those little fine details bits like in the center of the flower it's different it's fine but on those outer bits where we've got that little seed potty type of e thing that's where you don't want it so I am not actually going straight up to it I'm sort of going just closely to it and because it is a, not a very dark um, paint dark background that I'm, I'm applying you don't really see it in the in the card at the end so that's pretty I was pretty happy with that in the end so that's one way you can fix it but if you have a darker color then you do have a bit of a bigger problem what I'd probably suggest is yeah just letting it go re-wetting it moving the color around it's brown if it was in a big problem it's still brown so it's not a big deal and then just going back through later so we've got some of the again of that white paint and we're just using a fan brush and applying some splatters this is all dry now so it's going to be a little bit warmed but it's pretty good we're going to use a grid here to apply our stamp so I'm just trying to figure out what one I want and we're going to use this sending hugs and I wanted it to stand out a little bit more than just the straight Versamark Versafine so we're going to clear emboss that so I apply our anti-static pad we're going to stamp that twice and we're going to use some clear embossing powder like I said and heat that up and that's pretty much going to be it I'm going to trim this card down the cardstock is a little bit more unusual because I took a little bit too much off the bottom but I didn't want my stems to just stop so it's 14.9 by 7 and the brown cardstock is 14.4 by 10 we're going to mat that up and that's it we're going to lay out that with a bit of foam tape so hop over to Leslie's uh, she's got a Facebook page she's got her website and she can set you up with anything you want as I said like and subscribe that would be amazing that would be so helpful click the little bell and that way you get notified whenever I have a new video up I hope you enjoy that thank you so much take care bye